must say I was deeply grieved when Dave told me about your sad loss, Betty. Henry was a credit to his profession. The thin blue line can only be further weakened by his tragic demise. That's very kind of you to say so. This country needs police officers of his calibre to stem the rising tide of lawlessness and politics of self-serving greed that pervade this great land of ours. Well, yeah. So what sort of money were you hoping for on this? Well, I don't really know. Henry used to look after the financial side of things. A friend of mine thought it might be worth about 5,000. Oh, a bit on the optimistic side, I'd say. There's been a definite down market curve in the demand for caravans since the uh, advent of your hippie traveller. There has. Which is why I dashed round as soon as Dave told me you were thinking of selling it. As a bereaving widow, and one of our own, so to speak, I feel it is my duty to protect you from those who would exploit your vulnerability. Thank you, Arthur. I appreciate that. Rest assured, by the time you come back from visiting your daughter, I will have obtained the best possible price for this. And please, don't ask me to accept a commission. I do it in memory. May he rest in peace. His me will be resting in peace now he's gone, Arthur. He was a copper, Arthur. He'd flop over in his grave if he thought he was handed it. Do I detect a note of mistrust here, Dave? Well, I may not have got on very well with my brother-in-law, but Betty is my sister, and all she's got to live on now is a police pension. She needs all the dough she can get. It warms the cockles to know I've got your personal endorsement on this, Dave. Yeah. Well, I've told her to put an advert in the local news agent's window. Don't be silly, Tommy. Caravan in this condition, I'm looking at six grand minimum. No, no, no. Sorry, we can't do business. Tell her. What's that? I don't know. Well, you better get it open. Get it open? <laughs> do that again. <laughs> what? Arthur, is that you? For God's sake, get me out of here. Who's that? It's Sydney, Arthur. Sydney? The blood is bursting my head. At least turn me the right way up. Always get the delivery man back to cart him away. I heard that. Uh, what is this, Sydney? Some kosher religious ritual I'm unaware of? A ritual? I'm trapped in this timber tomb and this is a ritual? Oh. Look, here, Sydney. Oh. A simple question, Sydney, but what are you doing being delivered here in a crate? So, it's, it's an unusual way to travel. I have my reasons. I can't wait to hear them. Sit down. A terrible thing happened. It started when I was told I had a terminal illness in my body. And where else could you have it? I came for protection, and this is the sympathy I get. Ray, get the man a cup of tea. A very large vodka I could manage. Ray. So what is this protection you're on about, Sydney? Someone is trying to kill me. Yeah, that would be God, would it, Sydney? I'm getting these pains, right? I go to the doctor, he sends me to a specialist, two weeks later I get the prognosis. An agonising death in a matter of weeks. I decide to kill myself. Oh, yeah, I can see the logic in that. I want Sadie, my lovely wife, God bless her, should have security when I'm gone. You understand? Yeah, if you're talking insurance policies, Sydney, I think another look at the small print will tell you that suicide puts the kibosh on sums assured. So tell me about it. I'm in a daze for days trying to figure a swindle. And then fate took a hand. It was like a sign. I'm in this pub, and there's this loony with, can you believe, a spider tattooed on his face, ranting on about wanting to exterminate anyone who doesn't support his football team. Perfect, I tell myself. Perfect? Don't forget my head is in a turmoil. I wait for him to go to the gents. I schlep in after him. We're alone. I tell him I hate football, in particular his team, and for a sum would he kill me. Big mistake. He wanted to do it right then, in the toilet, without payment. So, what happened? It took all my powers of persuasion to tell him there's a more rational way of going about this. 
This was not an easy thing to do. He has a very unreasonable attitude. Anyway, cut a long one. He agrees to a deal, money changes hands, and I tell him the rest he can collect from my person when he um, does the business. As a matter of interest, Sydney, how much? 500 quid, half up front. This maniac's willing to commit a murder for a mere monkey. I bartered him down from a grand. When he mullers me, what can he do, Sue? Well, it makes good business sense. I tell him I need a fortnight to settle my affairs. Then it's uh, open season on Sydney Myers, and I go home to my Sadie. As soon as I get through the door, she's on me, rabbiting on. I'm pleased she's happy, but I'm confused. Why? I'm dying and she's happy. Turns out I'm not dying. The doctor rang to say there was a mix-up with my tests. I then remembered the loon I'd hired to kill me. Well, you would, wouldn't you? So what did you do? Well, I went back to the pub. No sign of him. Yeah, uh, uh, Sydney, uh, why, why don't you take your coat off? So am I to assume from your unusual delivery here today that you still haven't located him? I spent the next fortnight schlepping around trying to find him. Nothing. People start to think I'm acting strange. Sydney, you are acting strange. Sadie's giving me weird looks, hardly speaking. Well, it does occur to me that she might be worried. Not being cognizant with the situation, if you get my meaning. I should tell her I've conspired to arrange my own murder and I'm having contract problems. A trouble shared is a trouble halved, Sydney. As long as it's not shared with me. Arthur, the fortnight is up. A deranged person will be looking for me and I've told him where to look. If you really think this nut is after, why not let the old bill sort it out? Well, they, they could get out of control. Oh, well, policemen, suddenly? They're looking for clues, motives? Worse, they're studying the company books. Uh, I'm glad to see you got your priorities right, Sydney. So, uh, yesterday, it's evening. I'm still at the factory worrying what to do. Everyone's gone home. I daren't leave the building. What if he breaks in? So, I go down to the loading bay, I put this address on a crate, and leave a note for the foreman to see that it's shipped special delivery first thing. Brilliant, eh? It's not without a modicum of ingenuity. I grant you that, Sydney. Nobody knows where I am except you and Ray. Oh, we're the lucky ones. Yeah, this is all very interesting, but what do you expect me to do? Well, you have connections, and Ray is a minder. I need protection. You've got to find and stop this madman for me. This could be very complicated. I have funds. I need money up front. Are we talking cost? His life is in danger and he wants to negotiate. We shouldn't haggle a little? Look, let me put it this way. Dying could ruin your living. Such logic. Listen and learn. The man's a master. All right, Arthur. Tell me the damage. Oh, uh, uh, well, well, I mean, there's uh, accommodation in a safe house. Uh, food, sundries, round-the-clock protection. What should we say? Uh, two grand. So we say a grand now and the other half when you've done the business? Well, I think I can accommodate you on those terms, Sydney. Help yourself. He couldn't ring to tell me himself? We thought it better that someone should be with you when you learn what had happened. First I'm told he's dying of cancer, then he's not. Then you tell me arranged for someone to murder him and this person is trying to. Upset? Me? I just want to reassure you that I've got everything under control. Really? Absolutely. And how much is this protection costing, Arthur? Oh, please, Sadie, you and Sydney are friends. I'm not keeping accounts. Accounts I like. They can be checked. Look, Sadie, I know you're upset, and I hope you don't mind my saying this, but I find your attitude a bit confusing. I mean, Sydney could be in serious danger. You really think so? Well, put it like this, until we're sure, can we afford to take the chance? I don't know what I think he is. Maybe he's gone a little crazy, you know? No, 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 no. I mean, I know Sydney can be a bit eccentric, but... I mean, do you really think he'd make up something like this? Arthur, he had himself posted to you in a box. You don't think that indicates a troubled mind? Well, you may be right. But until we're sure, I think you should let me handle things. But shouldn't we inform the police? No, 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 no. Sydney was most specific about that. The uh, legal side could get very nasty, arranging your own demise, if you get my meaning. I don't think I can take much more of this. Well, that is why I am here, to help you shoulder the burden in your hour of need. And, um, could you throw a few bits of clobber and toiletries into a bag? For Sydney. 
you know, I can't imagine anyone wanting to harm my... How long did he say he'd be? Well, not long is what he said. Yeah, but you know Arthur. For this, I'm paying him good money. Of course she's upset. She's your wife. But the moment she knew you were in my safekeeping, relief and gratitude spread across her boat like a ray of sunshine. And she's going to stay away from the house and go to her mother's? She is. So uh, where are you taking me? A haven of refuge far from the maddening crowd. A safe house where you can rest your weary till Ray and me sort your little problem out. What's all this, then? Don't worry. That is all part of my overall strategy. In you get, Sydney. In you go. No, 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 lay on the floor. Lay on the floor. The floor? Yeah, put this blanket over your head. Well, there was some reason for this, is there? Well, we can't take the risk of you being spotted on the open road, can we? What open road? Oh. Yeah. I don't get it. Yours is not the reason why, Raymond. Money I'm paying you to lay on the floor like a beast and suffocate. Tell me I'm not thinking what I'm thinking. What's going on, Arthur? Standard protection procedure, Sydney. Keep an eye out. You'll be out of sight and you'll have all the creature comforts for the journey. Journey? What journey? No, I'm sorry, Sydney. Security demands that remains privileged information. I work on the need to know principle and client confidentiality. I'm the client. Precisely. Oh! What? What? I thought I saw someone. <laughs> Keep away from the windows. Right, let's get this thing hooked up and get off the manor. Yeah, Arthur, you can't take this. It's Dave's sisters. I have an arrangement with her. Does she know about that? Make for the M25. We're heading south. South? Where's south? Right. What, you're going to park him up on the coast? Well, personally, I'd rather dump him on the beaches of Normandy. The further away Sydney is, the less ag I'll have to suffer. I'm sure about this. Well, it's the least I can do to help a fellow human being in Stuck. Come on, Arthur, the man's in fantasy land. So who am I to deny him his dreams? Who's your friend? Always remember, Raymond, a friend in need is a pest. But try as I may, my charitable nature always will out. And business is business. Yes, why didn't you just stick him into an hotel? Too exposed. Cuts into the overheads. Is all yours. It lights! <laughs> Go on!
When she's the club. Now, Arthur, you can't really believe that this hooligan, who probably doesn't exist anyway... Gee, come on, come on. ...is actually out there trying to kill Sydney. Raymond, I am, like a lawyer, simply acting on my client's instructions. Oh, the man's wacko, oh. Arthur. He's definitely oh. a suitable case for treatment. Well, what did he look like? He didn't happen to be wearing a trilby hat, did he? A blanket over his head. Yeah, does Dave know you're borrowing his sister's caravan? Dave isn't in the frame. It's a private arrangement, I told you. And I don't want you mentioning it to him. Yeah, so what's the plan? Well, we locate this caravan site that the AA told me about, and then we park Sydney up and let him roast for a few days, uh, and rest secure for a few days while we decide what to do. Well, there's nothing much we can do, Arthur. Watch and wait, Ray. Watch and wait. What you wait for what? Developments. Developments? Arthur, what are you going on about? Tactics. I'll give up. Yeah, you do know, I suppose, that it's an offence to carry someone in a caravan when it's being towed. So who's to know? Besides, the man's on the open road, on his way to a sojourn by the seaside. What more could he ask for? Probably just want some fresh air. I hope you got a good excuse. Arthur, tell him I'm a child. Say you just picked me up. Be stupid, they would have checked out the reg number on the radio. Is this your car and caravan, sir? Um, as a matter of fact, it's um it's this gentleman's here. Some problem, officer? If you wouldn't both mind getting out of the car, sir. I suppose you know it's an offence to carry passengers <laughs> in a caravan while mobile, sir. Oh, oh yes, of course. Good grief! Raymond! Oh. Your Uncle Sydney! <laughs> Did he get in there? Oh, oh, oh. Terrible. Oh, what can you do, officer? The man's non compass. He, he should be institutionalized, but uh, you know what it is family. How he snuck in there without my nephew seeing him, I'll never know. Got a license? Your nephew, as he said? Oh, yes. Yes. All in all, not a bad result. Lucky I was there to speak up for you. Speak up for me? I've got a ticket down to this lunacy. Small endorsement, that's all. Make you be more careful next time. Well, at least you got one thing right. Yeah? Yeah, there's definitely madness in the family. Oh, this I can believe. Sydney, you feeling better now? I felt better when I had pneumonia. Oh, what's happening, Arthur? Where are you taking me? Oh, I'm glad you asked that question. Now that we're out of the smoke and into the safety zone, I can tell you, Brighton. You're taking me to the coast? London by the sea. You'll love it. Stand on me. Well, maybe if we stay at the Grand, I could learn to like. Would that we could, Sydney. Would that we could. But you have charged me with your safety, and that makes me honour bound to make that my number one priority. Now, the Grand is much too public for a man in your circles and position in life. You might be recognised. Remember the Spider-Man. Who knows how far his tentacles will stretch? So what do you have in mind? A nice select caravan site up on the downs. Lovely views, I'm told. 
Hey, Ray, pull over, stop the car. I'm feeling nauseous. Uh, release of tension, Sydney. Not unexpected. There's a nice little diner along here, as I remember. We'll stop and have a mixed grill. You'll feel as right as ninepence. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Move, Sydney. Bad move. I don't think he'll stand for it, Arthur. You've definitely upset him. Upset him? The man was nearly ill in my hat. I've had this tip for, for over 20 years, part of my persona. Heard indoors bought this hat. Yeah, well, don't go off about it. Here he comes. Sydney, you're looking better already. Why didn't you tell me you suffered with travel sickness? I'd have got some pills before we left. What kind? Cyanide? <laughs> Cyanide. That's what I like to see. Humor in adversity, cyanide. <laughs> cyanide. That's very good. A lot of our own came down here to live in Brighton during and after the war. Got in on the black market. Hooky antiques. Good earner. Then there were the racetrack mobs. Little Dicky and his film, Brighton Rock. Those were the days, eh, Sydney? I was selling Schmutter and Bethnal Green. What do I know from Brighton? You know, you're feeling better now, then, Sydney. Incarcerated and hurled around in a tin box till I suffer wounds to the head and sickness. I feel wonderful. I'm at my peak. A few hazards en route, Sydney, is a small price to pay for ultimate security. But don't worry, we'll be there in about 30 minutes. Nothing can go wrong now. How do you? Hold on. Oh, my God. Stop. Oh, save me, save me. I've got it, I've got it. <sighs> That's the joy of mobile homes. If necessary, you could camp here for the night, Sydney. Oh. Loved an onion, did the Prince Regent. Yeah, and a tart, by all accounts. Yeah, he liked his grub. I'm talking about courtesans. Oh, especially a drop of shellfish. Well, which way now? Oh, hold on, hold on. I've got to get my bearings. It's yonk since I was down here. And me, you have to bring. I thought you knew the way, Arthur. Left. No, no, right, along the front. Oh, I don't know. Hang on, look, I've got the directions in my pocket somewhere. Well, look at that, Sydney. None of your jerry-built rubbish here. They knew how to bung up a building, that Regency firm. How were their mobile homes? There's boats down it. Arthur, this can't be right. But we should have gone left. Right. Left. Right. Client satisfaction, that's my creed, Sydney. Oh, there's boating on the downs. This marina wasn't here before. Nor was that one-way system. It's all changed. It's all changed. You certainly haven't. We'll just have to march on. Arthur, you've got us lost. Again. These lights lodged in the ramp wall of a tree, don't they? Where were the lights? Where were the lights? Go on, straight up. Straight up. The racetrack's over there somewhere. And the sight's bang near it, according to this. Moses didn't take this long to find the promised land. He's over there. Look. Chuck a left, Ray. Chuck a left. But where? Where? Over there. Look. There's the rails. Hmm. 
must be joking. This is ridiculous, Arthur. It, this is definitely another nicky. Oh, stop going off. Another five furlongs and we'll be home and hosed. You can forget that. That's well secure. Right. Return to post. We'll go and see if we can find a way round to that road. I'd say the going was good and firm, wouldn't you, Sydney? This is a select site? It is, it is. So how come no one's here? Well, that should tell you how select it is. Come oh, on, back, back, back. Left hand down, left hand down. That's it, that's it, that's it. Whoa. Perfect. Come on, Sydney. You'll be in direct touch with nature's bounty, here. Yeah? It's the Samaritans I should be in touch with. That's a spirit. Oh. I knew you'd be pleased. Right, come on, let's get this thing unhooked. Well, now, I do that, do you? Cos I don't. Yeah, of course. Put those leg thingies down at the back and wind that jockey wheel down at the front. Look, we can't hang around here all night. Sydney's had a long day. He wants to get his head down. Come on, Sydney. Here we are. Here you go. Oh, yeah, all right. No, Arthur. No. That is not our deal. You're not leaving me here alone. Well, it'll be reasonable, Sydney. Ray and me can't dwell, can we? We've got to schlep lively back to town and track down this tattooed assassin and eliminate him. Eliminate him? Well, reason with him. And if that don't work, a few right-handers might work the oracle. I'm telling you now, Arthur. I'm not paying you two grand to be dumped in the wilderness on my own. It's only for one night. No! And candles I've got for lighting. No food. Sydney. I do not expect you to understand the finer aspects of security, but I do expect you to respect my judgment in these matters. As far as provisions are concerned, I'll see they're delivered first thing in the morning. I want you should return my cheque. I do not understand this attitude. You tell him, Ray. Tell him what? Well, tell him the enormous expense I've already incurred acquiring this deluxe sanctuary so that he should have the best possible protection. And is it my fault he's no eating? It's someone else's. My lawyer will be dealing with whoever's responsible. Arthur. Sydney. Tomorrow I cancel the cheque. No, 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 no. No, don't let's be hasty, Sydney. Look, I tell you what, Ray will stay with you. Well, don't be silly, Arthur. I can't let you deal with this loonies after Sydney. It could get physical, and that's my department. Ray's right. He goes, you stay. I haven't brought my jammies. <laughs> Sydney. Sydney? Sydney, you awake? Well, I am now. Isn't it quiet? You didn't wake me up just to tell me it was quiet. Her indoors don't like me being away all night. No. Give me a break, Arthur. Go to sleep. I can't. It's too quiet. Oh. Call of nature. I can't hear anything. No! What, what's that? What's that? What's happening? It's moving! Run, 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 run. Oh my god! Check it!
of gold. This is protection. Sydney! <laughs> oh, 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 I thought. Yeah. You didn't happen to pick up my jacket and my mobile phone before you jumped, did you? You're wearing a warm coat. Try freezing to death in a pyjama top. I'm talking about this. Eh? Unsuspecting citizens looking for a simple night's rest should not be exposed to displays of nether regions in public places. Come on. I shall write letters of strong disapproval to the local council about this. And the Ministry of Ag and Fish will hear a thing or two as well. No garments, no money. What are we going to do, Arthur? Don't, don't, don't despair, Sydney. I've taken good care of you so far, haven't I? Huh? Now, what we need to do is find a phone. Hello, operator. I want to make a reverse charge call to London, please. Yeah. 071. <laughs> no reply. My guess is that the boy is already out and about tracking down the quarry. I am the quarry. And I have to tell you, as an option to this, maybe it's better he should find me. That's the spirit, Sydney. Positive thinking. No, 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 enough is enough, Arthur. We find a hotel, we check in, we have a bath, eat some food. Look, how are we going to do that? Look, may I remind you, due to circumstances beyond my control, we are bereft. Folding, credit cards, ID and my mobile all gone to a fiery fate. Of this I need reminding? Oh, and while we're on the subject, I need you, when it's convenient, to write me out another cheque. That one was also doomed to the flames. I'm phoning the emergency services. No, 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 no. That is not a good idea, Sidney. Explanations will be required. Details demanded. Probes and inquiries made. And what are the publicity? I mean, suppose in the local press get a smell. The publicity alone could cost your life if the Spider-Man copped any clue to your whereabouts. No, no. My sworn remit was total protection for you, and this I will do. Arthur. Sydney. Does the term schlemiel mean anything to you? Billy Jacks. Yeah. I've got it, Billy Jacks. You remember Billy? Used to run a spieler by the Winchester in the 70s. I had to do a runner because of a misunderstanding about some marked cards. Now you want to reminisce? No, no, no. This is where he decamped to. Brighton. He got married and settled down. Someone told me. Hey, he could be in a book. trying to locate a Mr. Billy Jacks. I understand he resides at this abode. Who are you? Oh, my name is Arthur Daly. Uh, I'm a close friend of Mr. Jacks from yesteryear. I did try to telephone, but there appears to be a fault on the line. That's because it's been cut off. Ah. Uh, would you be uh, Mrs. Jacks, perchance? You're an old friend of his, you say? A dear and trusted friend, I can assure you. I see. Just wait there a moment. Is Billy... What did I tell you? Right result. Uh, I sincerely hope so, Arthur. I can't take much more of this. Well, don't worry, Sydney. You won't have to. <sighs> Billy's one of our own. He'll see us all right. You have my personal guarantee. <gasps> now, sod him well clear off. And if you find him, you tell him from me he's dead. 
Where next? Siberia? Oh. Nothing like the ozone for clearing the sinuses, is there? Uh, well, you can't knock the view. <sighs> two cups of tea and two rounds of toast each, please. Excuse me, pal. On a word with you. Oh, yeah? Who are you, then? You can't phone Dave? Uh, well, no, no, because he, he won't be at the Winchester at this time of day. So Bellum at home. I can't remember his number, can I? I mean, my little black book was cremated along with everything else. God knows how many contacts and addresses I sacrificed there. OK. I phoned Sadie at her mother's. We find a post office and I get her to send a money order. On a Sunday. Anyway, the post office won't part with a tanner unless you've got a brief to flash. And ask yourself this, do you want to panic her? Do you want the whale in? To eat, get some dry clothes and shelter is what I want. Is what I'm paying for. Maybe. Oh, my God. Come on, old boy. Come on. Time to get you back to the hospice. It, one does what one can to help her enjoy their final days. Time for your big purple tablets. The ones you like so much. OK, OK, so what's the bloody joke then, eh? <laughs> Your pal Sydney. He's the joke. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. That's a right load of cobblers he's told you for starters. Yeah, total rubbish. <laughs> so convince me then, eh? In the first place, I wouldn't kill anyone. Not for a poxy 500 quid. I ain't a complete nutter. No, not complete. I ain't saying I didn't take his dosh. Be a mug not to, considering. But it wasn't about knocking him off he was propping me about. There was some geezer he wanted me and my mates to put in hospital for a couple of weeks, that's all. Well, who was that then? I don't know. Bernie something or other? Buddy? Beatty, that was it. Hello, Sadie. Where's Sydney? First, I thought he was taking the piss. <laughs> what do you take me for? Some kind of prat? A prat? Never. You look a nice boy. A nice boy? I think I'll rearrange your face right now! No, 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 please, wait. So I listen to what he's got to say, don't I? What was that? No! I'm offering money, and you want to hurt me? How much money? Shall we say 200 pounds sterling? Shall we say I smash your kneecaps <laughs> with a club hammer? Oh. For nothing! Oh. Uh, 300. Uh, 500. Oh. And my children starve! <laughs> How do I know this geezer ain't some nutter and it's me that takes the battering? Hmm? We've got friends, they can't help. Oh. So I took his dosh, promised I'd oblige, and that was that. <laughs> yeah, we had a right nice drink up, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> so if he's looking for his money back, he's out of luck. Unless you fancy yourself as a debt collector. Don't you even think about it, pal. Now, you listen. Did he tell you why he wanted this geezer out? Wasn't interested, was I? As far as I'm concerned, I'm dealing with a nutter. Yeah, you could be right. Now, now, just leave the talking to me. This sort of gaff, they respect the voice of authority. And you say your luggage is following, sir? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and our credentials, so when my people get here from London. Mm. That is unfortunate. We seem to be completely full. Such authority, I'm impressed. Oh, come on. It's not a problem, Sydney. If at first you don't succeed. Sling your up the pair of you. Go on, get How out of it. How dare you? I'm a respectable businessman. Rich will be issued. Assault charges filed. Stand on me. 
Sydney. Bloody cheek. It's the last time they get my patronage. The tourist board will hear from me, mark my words. Arthur. Sydney. You're not a well man, do you know that? Be honest, Sydney. You don't look all that jolly yourself. Here, listen, one more thing. You didn't have anything to do with sticking him in a crate and sending him parcel post, did you? of it as an adventure, Sydney. Man against the elements, that sort of thing. I mean, Joseph didn't turn it in when he was slapping around Bethlehem looking for digs, did he? No. Because him and his missus knew that if all else failed, the Lord would provide. Even if he was a bit young at the time. sister's caravan. Oh, you know about that, do you? Well, all I know, you and he were seen bunging a bloke in the back with a blanket over his head and driving off. Well, what's it all about? Well, get us a drink, Dave. I'll tell you the truth, I'm not too sure myself. So it's not blues, but would they supply you with a smart whistle gratis? I shouldn't be seen dead in a suit like this. Ah, uh, you've got to admire the Sally Ann. You won't catch me ducking out when they come round in Winchester with with their collecting box and their copies of war cry. Care and compassion, that is what it's about. Do you mind? Oh, that is disgusting. You pull yourself together and get a job. Oh, no. no don't worry, Dave, the caravan's OK. Oh, it's not the caravan, no, that is important enough. But guess who was in here last night looking for Sydney? Lou. Only the bloke you'd hired to have hospitalised by them two loons you was on about. The Bosch. <laughs> Who's he? Bernie the Bosch Beatty. Big time blagger and major psychopath. Yeah, but what would he want with Sydney? I don't know. But you can bet it wasn't to exchange pleasantry. He's not called the Bosch for nothing. If he gets the ump with you, he boshes you with bars of iron. Are you a sugar? Stay here on my own with bums and winos, this you can forget. Shh, shush, they might hear you. Have you no sensitivity for these poor wretches? There, but for the grace of Sydney, remember. And what, what safer sanctuary than one of his many mansions? No, Arthur, no. Now, you get on the telephone, you talk to somebody, and you get me all out right, of here. All right, don't give a flap. I'll tell you what I do. You stay here and have seconds or something, and I'll go and see what I can sort. I'll come with you. No good. Nothing. You know, he's either got it switched off or he's let the battery run out. Well, you better get back down there, Ray, a bit lively and give him the office. Yeah, and while you're at it, tell him to bring my sister's caravan back pronto. It's not even insured. Any damage, and it is strictly down to Arthur. What's he saying? What's he saying? Oh, my God. Oh, my God, not the Bosch. Yeah, well, I don't know what he wants him for. Yeah, but if Sydney arranged to have him done over and he's found out about it, it don't take too much working out, does it? Right. Yeah, all right, well, hang on a minute. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, I want a word. Yeah, okay. yeah, go on, then. Yeah. What are you doing there? Never mind what I'm doing here. You get down here right away. Yeah, right. Hey, hold on, uh, Dave wants a word with you. Oh, God. 
Yeah, and by the way, he knows you've got the caravan. Well, he's a bit worried. It ain't insured. Uh, Arthur? Arthur? He's hung up. Here. Sydney's still with them, is he? I don't suppose you care to tell us what all this is about, would you? A man can't fib a little to protect his family. Fib a little? Fib a little? You've been telling diabolical porkies all along. And now you shove me in the frame with a bosh. Have you any idea how many wheelchair cases are down to him? Oh, what can I say? It's my fault the man got an early release. Oh, you are disturbed. The bosh asks you to look after his money while he's doing his porridge, and you steal it? Now, be reasonable, Arthur. He stole it first. Anyway, I didn't steal. I, um, invested. Hundred grand? Did I hear any complaints from him when the business was going well? So I'm to be blamed? The bank's about to foreclose? Oh, God. Such tragedy. A fortnight and more, I'm out of stuck. The house sale completed. All the factory stock sold, and I disappear. A new name, a new life. In seven years, I'm officially declared dead, and Sadie, God bless her, cashes in my life policy and joins me to retire in the sun. It's a wonderful plan. Except for one mistake. You I have to pick to give me an alibi. Alibi? Well, of course. As soon as that, that tattooed crazy and his mates had dealt with the Bosch, I was going to tell you all about it. An extra earner you would have got for this favour, believe me. Extra earner? Certainly. When inquiries are made about my disappearance, you confirm that I hired you to protect me. You say... I didn't say from whom, you were just doing your job. So, it's your fault you left me alone for an hour and I'd gone when you returned. Nothing personal, Arthur, it's business. Sister, sister, is there somewhere I can lie down? I'm not feeling all that. Leave me alone. I'm making my funeral arrangements. It's the bush. He's here. What? No. No, Bernie. No. No, I swear he's nothing to do with me. He told me terrible porkies. Terrible. I know, Arthur. I know. Ray told me. God bless you, Arthur. It's good to see you after all these years. And Sydney. Sydney. I should find you in this place. Praise the Lord! God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ten years in the shovel and he's seen the light. He's come to forgive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.